Two days after the attack on the convoy of his officials, the convoy of the Boronu state governor, Babagana Zulum, was ambushed on Sunday by gunmen suspected to be members of the Boko Haram. The ambush occurred at the gov as the governor's convoy was departing Baga town in Kukawa local government area. At least 15 security personnel had died in an ambush on Friday as a convoy of the governor was driving towards Baga town to participate in the official relocation of IDP back to their reclaimed communities after years of displacement. The Friday ambush was condemned by President Muhammad Bukhari, who suggested sabotage of Mr. Zulum's, Zulum's efforts as governor. Joining us now is security expert Tony Ofoyeton to speak on this. Thank you for joining us. Now, while we are still yet to decipher what is going on uh, with the Friday attack on the governor, another ambush has been laid against him 48 hours after. How serious can you describe these deadly attacks? Well, I, I think it is basically a strategy of the terrorists to establish a point to the extent that um, uh, while the military is saying that uh, we have um, uh, taken over this community, the terrorist is basically saying that the community is not as safe as the military will portray before the public. Um, basically, it's a strategy. And I think that, um, um, yes, the governor's life is um, at stake because the governor, um, basically being the uh, chief security officer of the state, whether the attack is successful or not, that is why you have it in the news today. The terrorists want to do everything that will make them to perpetually remain in the news and to also de-emphasize the might of the military. Uh, what I would just say is that uh, most likely the governor have to now look inward, the inward to the extent of uh, who are those that are actually perpetrating this act. You see, the, the difference between what we practice as security in this part of the world and what is happening in um, other clients is that um, an attack on a dignitary like that for the first time should be treated as if it's the worst of all attack against the nation and should be investigated to the very root. But unfortunately, immediately after the attack and the, the military came to deny and said they were not part of it, neither were they complacent, everybody withdrew to their shelf and you now had a second and even a third attack. So if the, if the security agencies are able to come all out, to fish out those that are responsible for it, it will go a long way in standing such attacks. Don't forget that it's not the first time that the governor of uh, Bono State will be attacked. The former governor of Bono State was also attacked in like manner until he decided to also withdraw into his shelf. And the present governor of uh, Bono State is one proactive um, progressive-minded governor, and uh, you see him always with the people. You see uh, him but, always but, but interested some... in the activity of the people. You see him interested in even educating the people, which the Boko Haram are not interested in. The Boko Haram wants a community that is not educated, so that they become more and more vulnerable. A Mr. Foyeton, uh, some are blaming the governor for overexposing himself and his security detail by going uh, to the volatile region. Uh, what do you say to that? You, you seem to believe he is very proactive. He is, he is. If you look at his policy, if you look at his, um, the fact that he's also the type that is prone to educational development of um, uh, Bono State, uh, in contradiction to other previous uh, governments, uh, I think it is one thing that um, uh, the terrorists don't really like. Uh, also, the fact that he's also a grassroots person. Uh, he has been able to, so far so well, he's been able to gain the patronage of his people. And which, um, to me, it doesn't go too well also with um, the, those that are protagonists of the war there. Uh, but I think it is also high time that he thought of um, his security because um, a, a living legend is always better than, um, you know, a dead um, hero. So I think it is high time that he look at those that are responsible for his security team and he also look at the terrain each time he goes. The application of technology as it is now is one thing that we have advocated for. In contemporary society, I don't see any reason why 
um, the military should not be able to look at area surveillance of Bono. Bono is a very big, it's a very, very big and massive state. Bono State alone has a land mass that is equivalent to that of the whole of North uh, Southeast. You know, so you can see how big it is, and you have villages scattered all over. So it, 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 it is big. Do more than the land um, power as it is. So uh, the Air Force has more work to do in Bono State. Uh, with the assistance of the Air Force, they will be able to see patches when they move either in convo or they move in group. The area surveillance will be able to detect them. They can use drones. There are drones that can travel as much as 5,000 kilometers. Even in the comfort of a central control system. Let, let me ask you this question, Mr. Oboyeto. The military as a, battle, as a response team. Not to help yeah, I'm trying to interject so I can actually ask you uh, the fate of the ordinary uh, people. If the governor um, in such a big state um, is this vulnerable, and you say it's a massive space uh, that we have there, I mean, should the people be scared? Well, of course, the people should not be scared because that is their village. That is where they come from. That is where God has created them to be. They cannot be scared of where they came from. The only thing for them to do is to cooperate with all uh, relevant security agencies. And it is also high time, too, for the government to understand that security is the primary responsibility of the government. So the government should not shy away from its responsibility. Neither should the government begin to politicize security, as it's been done now. Now, people are already shouting and crying for the a change of betting, as it were, among um, the, the service chiefs. I don't see any reason on earth why the president is still keeping the service chief. Except it's just trying to be unnecessarily pompous. So I how can they intervene in this matter, Mr. Foyeto? They have done excellently well. But I think it is high time they took the ban and get out of the office. So uh, how, how can the federal government intervene in the situation in Bonanu right now? Well, I, I think one of the things that the government can do as it is, is to bring in technology. Uh, bring in technology and also be able to see how they are able to uh, get the, the confidence and the support of the indigenous, the villagers there. Because if you ask me from what is going on, it's like the villagers seem to be more sympathetic to the cause of the terrorists for whatever reason, either because of religious sentiment, either because of um, tribal sentiment, for whatever reason, and also because of uh, some lack of basic amenities. The level of poverty, the level of lack of education there is so high. And uh, because of that, the people seem to be carried away with the peanuts. The terrorists will give them to recruit their children, making them to believe that they are fighting the cause of their God, and recruiting them to go and die for nothing at the end of the day. So it is the responsibility of the government to reorientate the people, build a high level of trust, bring in technology, and also fish out those that are participants, criminals, even in the village. Those that right. are foiling and encouraging terrorism, even in the military, because of what they are able to get at the end of the day. The well, government should be able to look at all this angle. Who are those that are supporters of this group? Who are the sponsors of this group? Who are the protagonists of this group? The government should be able to do a thorough internal audit. All right, Mr. Of Ofoyeto, I'm afraid that's the much time will permit us. I must thank you very much for joining us on the news. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.